One of my favorite things to talk about is seasons. Seasons are varied, allowing for different types of life to thrive, unique to our location on Earth, and follow a pattern based on the science of the sun and Earth's positions. Consider this. Why do animals migrate or hibernate during certain times of the year? We'll learn why seasons occur and how they impact life on Earth. And I want you to keep that, that last question in the back of your mind. So let's remember this. Our sun is the source of all energy for Earth's atmosphere. Our Earth actually rotates on its axis and revolves around the sun. Being able to differentiate between these two words is helpful for understanding how seasons work. So let's get started. Earth experiences rotations on its axis. Each rotation represents about one day or 24 hours. The Earth is tilted vertically on its axis at 23.5 degrees. And without that tilt, there would be no variation in weather and we wouldn't have seasons. Let's explore this a bit more. Earth also experiences revolutions, like a uh, revolution like a spinning tire or a bike wheel when moving or orbiting around the sun. So each revolution around the sun represents 365 days on Earth. Imagine Earth revolving around the sun. This could be split up into four equal sections or what we refer to as seasons. So picture this, the amount of solar radiation received in a given area is based on the sun's angle of incidence with the surface of the earth. If the sun's angle is more direct or closer to 90 degrees, then the maximum amount of solar radiation or insulation will be received. Throughout most of the year, this is in the case for the tropics. So surrounding the equator, we have the Tropic of Cancer, which is at about 23 degrees north, and the Tropic of Capricorn, which is at about 23 degrees south. That's where we're getting most of our direct sunlight. When the Earth changes position, however, so that one hemisphere is tilted towards the sun, the angle is much smaller. So that area will receive less insulation. So when the northern hemisphere is tilted towards the sun, it receives more sunlight unlike the Southern Hemisphere, which receives a smaller angle of insulation. Can you think of how this may relate to seasons? We can also use the Earth's poles to identify which season might be occurring. Summer in the North and winter in the South actually occurs in the same time. Northern and Southern Hemispheres experience opposite seasons. So let's expand what we already know. We know there are four seasons, summer, fall, winter, and spring. And here, just in this diagram, we can kind of break those down. So when the Tropic of Cancer is tilted towards the sun, it is summer in the Northern Hemisphere. We experience long and warm days. In the fall, we experience cooler days, the leaves change colors, and there's a reduction in photosynthesis. In the winter, our Tropic of Capricorn is now tilted towards the sun. And in the Northern Hemisphere, you're experiencing short and cold days. There's an increase in plant dormancy and animal, migra animal migration and hibernation uh, happens in colder climates. Then in the spring, warmer days occur, there's more precipitation, um, plants bloom, and because, less, because they're less dormant, animals tend to migrate back and hibernation ends. So latitude determines your experience both in the intensity of sunlight and the hours of daylight you receive. The further away from the equator, the more daylight day length can vary uh, based on where you are. So consider this. You can make an assumption that living near the North Pole is pretty cold. Why do you think that is? When would you expect the North Pole's weather to be the coldest? And why is that? When would you expect the South Pole to experience its cold weather. Do these occur at the same time? Living in the North and South Pole means you're the furthest away from the equator at 90 degrees North and 90 degrees South. Your angle of insulation is small and you don't experience the same seasons at the same time. So in the, when, the north, when the North Pole is tilted towards the sun, days are long and warmer than in the winter. In fact, the sun doesn't even set in North Pole between spring and fall. In contrast, the sun sets for six months, beginning in the fall until the spring, making winters dark, cold, and dreary. The opposite occurs in the South Pole. This is one of the reasons there is increased biodiversity near the equator, because there's less drastic changes in the weather. It's why humans and animals alike like to live in warm tropical climates, where the weather is nice and the angle of insulation is high. So let's recap. 
Solar energy, the tilt of the earth and its revolution around the sun gives us seasons. The angle of insulation provides solar radiation that then provides us energy and variation for our weather and temperature. This is all based on the location of where you are on earth. So your hemisphere and latitude determines the types of uh, seasons that you experience. So let's go back to what we asked, asked at the beginning of the video. Why do animals migrate as seasons change? Well, as weather shifts from warm to cold, liquid water is more likely to freeze and become less available for producers. They reduce your producers, like plants, uh, reduce the amount of photosynthesis. And this can easily be, uh, this can be especially seen in temperate areas where leaves change colors and tend to drop from trees. And since all organisms rely on producers to make energy available within their ecosystems, right? And this means that plants aren't producing flowers and fruits, they generally will, this means that there's less food for some animals. When there's less food available, animals will often hibernate to conserve energy, like mammals eating in preparation for winter and sleeping until spring, or some animals like birds will just migrate south where food is less scarce. So what observations can we make based on our takeaways? Well, now we can determine how latitude may influence seasonal temperature. How does Northern Hemisphere, how does the Northern Hemisphere differ from the Southern Hemisphere? And we can determine that Northern and Southern Hemisphere experiences can be similar and different. 